<laughs> okay, so don't get too excited. It's it's only a 300. Yeah, I tend to forget I actually have this motorcycle. Nice sunny day comes along, and I remember that I should probably crank it and ride it a little bit. So, uh, taking her out today. You know, one of the things I've noticed lately is that people love bringing up people's pasts, especially when they don't know anything about the real story, and like to bring things up, just try to make other people look bad. By the way, I'm gonna leave that running. Well, it hasn't been cranked in about six months and I don't trust the battery. I had to jump start it earlier. But like I was saying, you know, I've noticed that there's been a lot of memes about it here lately and stuff where people are trying to tell people just to leave their past in the past, but it seems like anytime someone's doing good, others just can't help but to try to ruin it to make themselves feel better or look better or whatever the situation may be. And when it comes to uh, to having a past that can actually really look a whole lot worse than what it was, well I can I can definitely say that I, uh, I take the cake on that as far as most people I know. So my story starts about 15 years ago when I'm sitting at a truck stop with some of my friends. The events and actions that come to pass over the next year end up actually causing me to go to prison about 10 years later. I'm gonna try to sum this all up in maybe a couple of episodes. I actually had been planning on talking about this later. I wanted to do the reveal of Anna's car and do a reveal on my car and some work I'm doing on the Hummer first. But apparently some people found out what I was going to be doing the segment on and went ahead and ran with it, causing me to get death threats and people threatening to do things to Anna and it's just a whole bunch of bad stuff. Now, if you know me, then you know that when it comes to sketchy things, I've been known to get into some sketchy stuff. I, I like going 200 miles an hour in a car. I like seeing how fast I can get up to on a motorcycle. I used to motocross race. I used to autocross race. I've always thought secret societies were cool. I like doing adventurous things. I like doing stuff that could potentially get me in trouble. As you can tell from some of our videos because we're usually running from the cops and things like that. So, yeah. And I also like to try to find sketchy places to record videos from and hope that the cops don't show up and run me off before it's too late. Anyway. So some friends and I were at a truck stop back 15 years ago, and as we're sitting there eating, all of a sudden this group of guys comes in wearing military-style uniforms and berets, black BDUs, they've got patches, all this, all this other stuff on them. And I asked my friend, I was like, is that one of the militias or something? Because I always thought, you know, local militias, those are, those are kind of cool. And a couple of these guys had pistols on them, and uh, I was like, what is that? So he tells me, that's the KKK, and I'm like, what? Apparently, this was some new reformed version of the Klan. Um, they didn't call themselves the KKK. They called themselves the, the Church of the National Knights. So I was like, what? And my friend that was with me said he knew somebody that knew somebody that apparently had been part of the group and said they were some new reformed Klan. They were more like a militia. They didn't actually use racial slurs and things like that, especially in public. They were trying to get away from the hate group image and were trying to go more for racial equality and all this kind of stuff, which sounded a little suspicious to me. So I was curious. Now, for those of you who don't know me, all throughout high school, I had a best friend named Charlie. Charlie and I spent every day together. Charlie and I spent the night at each other's houses. We went racing cars together. We got in trouble together, got into some stuff that we, could have gotten some big trouble for it one time and I helped him out and he was my best friend. He was a brother to me and um, I never referred to Charlie as my black friend, but Charlie was black. And uh, unfortunately he passed away. He passed away a while back and um, he had diabetes real bad and he, uh, he didn't take care of himself and ended up dying of kidney failure. And I'm still upset about that to this day. And if he was here, he would help dispel a lot of these rumors. And that's one of the things that really, really aggravates me. You see, we grew up in an area that was mostly white and Charlie was my best friend. And we got along better than anybody. And so for people to now call me racist because they think I was a part of something that I wasn't and then I get arrested for something that I was part of a conspiracy, it just did, it really pisses me off. It really pisses me off. So anyway, I'll, I'll expand 
more on, on the rest of that later, but let's go back to the truck stop. So the guys come in, my friend tells me about what they are and blah, blah, blah. And as they get ready to leave, they drop a little card on our table and say, you guys should come to one of our cookouts. And I'm like, what the crap? So one of my buddies was like, well, hey, what, what do you think? And, uh, and the girl I was dating at the time was like, what do they do? We should go see what they're doing. I want to check it out. And of course me being curious as always and uh, not worrying about what trouble could come of it. I'm like, well, this could be exciting. Now, one of my friends pointed out the fact that I am, I am not purely white uh, by racial standards, I guess you'd say. Even though I'm obviously not that tan, I'm also not that light. And my biological background genetically is, uh, well, we're, we're black, French, and Native American. So, probably not the best person to go and show up at a white supremacist event. So one of my friends asked me, he's like, are you sure you're not worried about them doing something? And I was like, well, I mean, they invited us. So either they're gonna kill us or we might have a fun story to tell later. I, I don't know. So eventually one of, one of my buddies reached out to the, the guy who left the card and was like, hey, I wanna check out one of your, one of your cookouts and, and wanna know what this is all about and uh, what you guys do. And the guy just gave him an address and said, be there at whatever time on whatever date. We decided, why not? We'll go check this thing out. Um, we were a little bit nervous. We didn't know what was gonna happen, but curiosity overcame us. So we decided to go and check this thing out. So we, uh, we took my, I actually had a Hummer at the time, so we hopped in my Hummer. We go and we're out in the middle of nowhere. We come across where this dirt road is, turn on the dirt road where the, where the address took us. We come upon this gate that has two guys standing there, again wearing berets and military looking uniforms and holding rifles and armed with pistols and things. And It was a little bit intimidating and uh, we, we pull up to the gate and they motion for me to roll down my window and I'm like, hey you know showed them the card the guy gave us they said do you have any weapons in the vehicle and we were like yeah we've got our pistols and he said leave them in the truck he said do you have any drugs or alcohol no sir okay you know no drugs or alcohol are allowed by beyond this point uh, which i thought was interesting no illegal firearms were allowed you know they had a few little rules like that so anyway they, they let us through now keep in mind this was 15 years ago so I'm, I'm really just going off what i can remember um i remember we uh we pull in we get out we start talking to a few people there there was probably 20 or 30 people and it was at this guy's house decent sized house uh, i don't know he had like 50 or 100 acres or something like that it was really like a regular cookout, but it was just a bunch of white people. I don't know, it wasn't anything unusual from what we saw at first. And then they um, they had their little speeches and things like that. They had a band playing, and with their speeches, it was mainly talking about um, upcoming voting and things like that, and who they were gonna vote for, for the, the governor, and then the upcoming presidential election at the time, and that they didn't want the country to be overtaken by illegal immigrants and things like that, and it wasn't quite what I expected. I really thought it'd be more like a bunch of crazy rednecks throwing the N-word around, and, and it really wasn't like that. Not to say some of those guys weren't crazy rednecks, but because there were a few, you know, you, you could tell, you could tell there was some of the, uh, some of the extremists but most of the guys were just ordinary people. There were business owners there. There were uh, police officers there. There were guys running for city council that showed up to this thing. It was, uh, it was pretty interesting. So as far as I can remember, it, uh, it, it, yeah, it really was just like a meet and greet. Nothing completely out of the ordinary. We ate barbecued chicken and talked to people about illegal immigration. And of course they're against it. Actually, one of the guys there, he said he employed a bunch of Mexicans that were legal and he didn't have a problem with that. He just didn't like the illegal ones coming in and trying to undercut the money that he was paying his regulars. And, and really that was, that's about the only thing I remember him talking about besides, you know, uh, who they were voting for and trying to keep their gun rights and things like that. So it was, uh, it was a little weird, but normal at the same time. Now, as far as the timeline of events since then, I can't really keep it all in track. But basically, after attending the event, they invited us to something else. And my friends are like, what do you think? Should we, uh, should we show up again? You know, they're bound to do something crazy. You know, they got to be up to something. And I'm like, well, I mean, hey, the food was good and it was free. So uh, I'm okay with it. And uh, so they invited us to the next one and the next one. 
But then after attending a couple of more events, we uh, we did actually finally get to see where they did the big cross lighting thing. And uh, I got to ask, you know, what that was all about. And, and they said they had been used wrongly to intimidate people of color in the past. And that's, that's how they worded it to me. But they said it was actually never supposed to be a scare tactic. That in the beginning, the whole idea of the, the lit cross was like a, it has some Methodist background to it apparently, where it's the light of Christ shining in the darkness. That's the way they said. They said it's the, the fire burning away the evil. So you can see where, you know, later it got adapted as a fear tactic though, because I mean, you wake up with a cross burning in your yard, it's, it's not going to be the most pleasant thing you could ever think of, I'm sure. Now I've got to say, and my friends admit as well, that seeing like a 15 foot, 20 foot cross in the middle of a field just flamed up, I, that, it was interesting. It, it, was, it was a crazy sight, it really was. You felt like you were back 100 years ago or something, but it was, uh, you know, the guys put on their robes and actually had the hoods and stuff, which is something we had been waiting to see. And it was a little freaky. Um, a bunch of pointy-hatted guys running around with torches, but it was just like they, they did their ceremony and then once again we ate and uh, had a lot of barbecue chicken and steak. It was really good food. Now the strange thing is after a couple of events that we went to and we were like, we were thinking, you know, we can just slip back out of this, stop going to these things. We got to see the cross thing. We got to see the hood thing. We got some pictures. We we're like, okay, we experienced it. They have not figured us out yet. They don't know that, um, that I have a bunch of friends that are minorities and you know that my best friend all throughout high school was black and that I'm not even really white so you know it was probably time to start trying to get away from them because like I said even though most of the guys were cool there was a few radicals and I didn't want to I didn't want to cross any lines because there's a there's a bunch of these groups across America and sometimes they all get together and you don't know what's going to happen but then I got a call from the police chief so the chief asked me if I could come by his office and I obliged. I, I came by and had to sit down with him. He told me, he said, I know who you've been hanging out with and what you guys have been doing. And I explained to him that, man, look, I'm not really trying to be a part of this thing. It was, we got invited and we've been to a few of the things. We wanted to check it out. We thought it was, it was something different. We'd never seen except on TV. And he said, no, no, no. He's like, I, I know that. I know that. He's like, I, I see the type of people that you employ at your businesses. I see the guys you hang out with. I know you're not one of them. I'm just trying to figure out what you're doing. And I explained to him, you know, what was going on. And he said, okay, I figured that was it. He said, you got to be careful. They'll suck people in, blah, blah, blah. He said, but I want you to do me a favor. And I was like, what? He said, I want you to keep going to their events if you can. And I'm like, what? So he told me, he would promise that I would stay out of trouble and basically kind of grant me immunity in the city as long as I would keep an eye on things within this group and let him know if there was anything super illegal going on. Now I told him, I was like, dude, I'm not a snitch. I don't want to, I, I, I don't want to wear that hat. He said, no, 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 I'm not asking you to be a snitch. He said, I'm just saying if it looks like someone's life might be in danger, if you see any illegal firearms or things like that, I'm not asking you to give me your names. Just let me know so that I can tell my guys to take a look into it because he didn't want them basically wasting their time investigating a group if there was nothing to it. So really he just wanted me to let him know if it was anything worth looking into and I told him so far they didn't allow drugs, they didn't allow alcohol, they did not allow any illegal firearms. If you had a gun on you out with them, you had to show them your concealed weapons permit. Like they were pretty tight on this. They know that people are watching them, they know the reputation they have. So I mean they're not gonna they're going to do anything stupid that, that I know of. But I told him, sure, I'll keep an eye on things. You keep me out of trouble. And I'll let you know if anything crazy is going on. So after my meeting with the police chief, we ended up uh, going to a few more events. I said, okay, we'll just, we'll, we'll keep feeling it out, see what's going on. And hey, at least I got a uh, get out of jail free card for now. So the only thing that, uh, that really of any significance that happened later on within this time frame of me being around these people was when the police chief called me back into the office because he found out that the Klan was planning on having a white supremacist rally in one of the nearby towns. You see, I found out something that day that I did not realize, and that was that the, uh, the regular Klan guys don't get along with the extreme white supremacists like the neo-Nazis. So the chief called me in and he had got word that the Klan was talking about having a rally in the next month, doing a little march and things like that uh, in a nearby town and he was friends with, with the chief of police there. 
and they come to find out that the skinheads were planning a rally within that same month as well. So what he had us do was figure out when the skinheads were going to plan their march and have the clan move their march to that weekend because since they don't get along, he knew that the clan would end up doing it, it would keep the skinheads away, and he said he would much rather put up with the KKK than the neo-Nazis because they tend to be more extreme, they use, uh, they use a lot of racial slurs in their speeches, they tend to get violent and break things and stuff of that nature. So I thought that was, I thought that was a little strange, but it made sense in a strange kind of way. And, and that's the thing, you, nowadays there's so much stuff going on behind the scenes that people don't know that a lot of times you think people are doing something bad, but it's actually to prevent something worse from happening. And this was one of those cases. I was like, you actually are encouraging them to do a march on a town, but it's to keep the extremist away. I was like, smart thinking. So I got with a couple of the, uh, the elders of the group, told them what was going on and that the skinheads were planning on coming down. And he said, no problem. They planned the march and like 400 people showed up and it actually was a I don't know, it was just a regular, it was like a parade, a parade of KKK people. There was no violence there. I mean, there was a little bit of yelling from the people watching. It was interesting. Uh, there was no fights or anything like that. And again, when these guys would do their speeches and things like that, they wouldn't use, they wouldn't use racial slurs and things like that. So I said, okay, you know, maybe they are trying to get away from, from what they were. And uh, I don't know, there's still a few of the guys that were a little creepy. But then there were some that were just normal old guys who I think were only in it because like their dads and dads, dads, grandpas had all been a part of this thing over the years. So anyway, to make a long story short, short story long, this is how I became associated with a white supremacist group. Although later, after the march, after one or two more events, my friends and I decided to start peeling away from the group. We did talk to some of the people there that we knew didn't have the extremist ideals and told them, hey, you know, this looks bad. The police know what's going on, things like that. And, um, well, we ended up actually getting, uh, getting exiled and banished. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> so anyway, it may sound kind of hokey. And I know it's literally my word against anybody else's unless you talk to someone who really knows me. But... We really, we went and checked this thing out because we were curious and we were wondering like, you know, after having a best friend like mine for years, I really kind of wanted to see what, you know, what these people's big problem was with, with black people, Mexicans, things like that. And honestly, the only thing that I could get from them was they, they don't like things like affirmative action. They don't want things that put the minorities above them. Okay so be it but they never really did anything violent or anything like that i understand that these groups don't need to exist because you do have extremists and a lot of them are crazy and unpredictable but in my personal experience these guys are probably nothing to worry about and honestly the fact that i hung out with them back then gave me a, a view from the other side of how how people see things and I mean, no matter your perspective on it, you're, you're right in whatever your view of it is. If you think that they should be shut down, then yeah, they probably should be. If you think, well, they're crazy. Yes, there are crazy people in these groups. Um, like I said, in the, the, the small amount of time that I was hanging out with these guys and trying to figure them out, I only met a few that were real extremists. But eventually, because there were extremists in the group, and once they found out what me and my friends were up to, they, uh, yeah, they weren't too happy about it, and I may or may not have uh, gotten one of the robes and let my black friend wear it for some funny pictures that he posted, and that might have uh, that might have pissed a few people off. But honestly, because to us it was one big joke. Yep, my my friends all knew what we were doing. Like I said, we were just kind of checking things out. But the problem is, anytime you show up to something like that, you get labeled. The FBI is watching, and they labeled me. Stuff like that will follow you throughout the years, even if your intentions were different from what they appear to be. And yeah, I'm not gonna deny that I went to a few of these things, but 
I want to be truthful on why I was there. And honestly, I was thinking, well, if these guys are trying to actually turn things around, maybe we could talk to a few of them and get them to, to turn their lives around. And it worked with a few of them. And then the ones who, uh, who didn't want it to work, well, they, uh, they got mad and said we were quote unquote banished. Um, the, uh, I would, my name was actually listed on some of the white supremacist pages. It said that I was banned from any white supremacist events because I was of mixed race that I was a mongrel and that I was associating with other mongrels. Uh, mongrels are people who, if you're black or mixed or anything like some of us, then we are just a mongrel. And I actually found it kind of funny because now I have people calling me a racist and this, that, and the other. And I'm like, I was literally listed as an enemy of the Klan. I am banished from white people events because I am not racist but people want to say I'm racist and kick my ass for it. And because of my involvement, I later actually went to prison for conspiracy of a hate crime. And um, that's gonna be up on the next episode. So uh, for now, just love each other. Be nice to people. Don't bring up people's past if you don't know what's really going on. And don't hate on anybody regardless of their skin color. You can not like somebody just because they're an asshole or a dick to you but you know we're all people we're all human we have to stick it out for each other and regardless of what people try to say all I've ever tried to do is help people I've had best friends of different colors I don't pull the whole oh I've got a black friend card because let me tell you when I was friends with Charlie I never once never once mentioned it as my black friend because that's bullshit the people who do that are the racist people. They try to get themselves out of trouble, they try to pin stuff on other people, and then use the excuse that that guy's racist or, well, I have black friends. Well, you know what? I just have friends. I had best friends, I had family, and I had a brother. I didn't have a black friend. So keep that in mind the next time you get people trying to talk shit, try to talk about things they don't know anything about, and then tell them to stick it up their ass. But anyway, guys, just try to be nice and, uh, Stay tuned to the next episode when I get to tell you about 10 years later when my neighbor decided to burn a cross and I went to prison for nine months because of it. It's a good story. Might as well share it. Maybe you'll learn something from my mistakes because boy, have I made a lot of them over the years. All right, love you guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you to all my supporters and our fans out there who understand and want to see what people are really like because I'm giving you guys the full, honest, uncensored version of me and of Anna. I hope you guys enjoy it, and uh, please don't threaten to kill me, because I really just, uh, I just want to be friends with everybody, and I want to help people, I want to be nice to people, and I want people to be nice to me, so uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next episode, thanks. Yeah, yeah, I've been running and running, live for the chase, life is a race, I'm out of space, let me get on my face, I got a taste, want the whole play, finna get laced if you step out of place, like, first off, you don't run nothing, all talk and your team bluff it, my squad, we all dream crush it, we ain't rush it, no discussion, all I know is us made for this, paid for this, yeah, slave for this, getting down and I'ma get it right, get on sight, like,